I am Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. It's a beautiful cold morning on Friday, the, oh, I don't know, 17th of January, something like that. I have to check. And uh, we've got a polar vortex coming in. And so most, of, let's say two thirds of the country is going to really feel the effects of it over the course of the next week or so. Uh, here in Maine, we're kind of used to it. We get these things all the time. And the uh, best thing to do is just have our hives well prepared for them. So um, what I typically have is colonies that have bee cozies on. And a bee cozy is a R8 insulation. In fact, this particular one, I've got two single story bee cozies on there. One here and one there. And that's because I ran out of doubles, so I'm overwintering a lot of doubles this year. Same with this hive, same with that one, that one, that one, and that one. Whereas, say, that one over there, that bottom one is a double. This is a single on top of a double, because I've got three supers on this hive. See, it's a double on top of a single, not a single on top of a double. Anyway, the things that I do to prepare the hives for winter time, underneath this, I'll have a sheet of insulation and then I've got a, a moisture board for absorbing moisture. I have a feeding rim in here where I can add extra food and then it's on top of my double D. The, with the cold coming, the sorts of things you can do if you're not insulated. Now, Insulation is not 100% required, and a lot of folks will swear by not using insulation at all. And in many cases, they're right. It's particularly useful when the temperature drops from uh, relatively warm conditions to very cold conditions very, very quickly. Uh, but it's also useful just to maintain that heat in the hive, uh, not to prevent dying, but to prevent a check in the production of building the colony back up. Now, if you're in an area where it has recently been relatively warm in January, and now it's getting cold, well, your colony may have started to rear brood, and it would be a shame to lose the brood that they had in there. They don't usually produce much brood in January up here, but they usually start in January. In February, we get more, and March, we get more, and April, they really go to town. But... The cluster has to expand and contract depending on how tightly they have to cluster together to keep the generate enough warmth in the hive. And so the better the hive is insulated, the more area they can cover, the more brood they can rear. And the easier it is to keep that brood warm in the event of a sudden drop in temperature like we're going to have this week. So I wouldn't fret too much about the cold. But if you have not got, because the bees are cope with the cold usually very, very well. But if you haven't insulated the hives at all, there's a few things that you can do. You can just take a sheet of insulation, for instance. I'd take my, if I was looking to put insulation, if say there was no insulation on here, a simple thing you could do, put another sheet of insulation on top, and that'll stop more of the heat radiating out through the top of the hive. And just like in our houses, we lose most of the heat through the roof rather than the walls and the windows. So here we're losing very little from the sides and I've got a good amount of insulation on the top so I don't lose as much heat. I'm losing heat certainly from the upper entrance and from the lower entrance down there. And as you can see, we have bees that come out and die on the snow. This is absolutely normal to sign that the cluster is nice and warm inside. But as well as, say, adding a sheet of insulation on, um, you could do what I've done with the nukes over here. If you've got some bubble wrap, you can just come and staple that onto the side. Just held in with staples. I've got these nukes paired one next to the other. The outer edge is not insulated, but the side is slightly insulated. The tops have extra insulation in here and over the top here. And they're also sitting on top of a bigger hive down below it. 
and the heat from the bottom of that hive is coming up and warming the bottom of this hive and so these ones are benefiting from some of that heat down below now you can't set that up right now but you can set this sort of thing up throw some extra insulation on any little bit helps so as you see i've got quite a few colonies set up that way uh for my nukes i'm probably over what two four six eight ten twelve fourteen nukes in this yard um maybe but maybe one or two in another yard but that's about it but anyway with this polar vortex coming with this cold uh the bees will cope with it very well as long as they've got plenty of food and uh, if there is not too much exposure to wind in this yard i've got good cover from this side to stop the northerly winds hitting the hives directly it's not so much that you're looking to eliminate wind it's just that you don't want them blasted from wind if if i was getting a lot of wind from this direction i could always set up pallets and, and one or two times i have i have done that in some of my yards where they're in a windy area i'd set up pallets tied together at the top so that they could sit in little a-frames around the yard to stop the wind but i found actually these bee cozies are a great way to avoid issues with the wind one thing i've got to do when the ground is no longer frozen is replace some bare fence uh, posts here yeah, although the fence is still working it's uh getting a little low to the ground here at the moment uh so i've got to replace that post but otherwise it's in pretty good shape so these hives done pretty well this hive has probably the most dead bees in front of it there's not too much poop on the ground so i'm not worried about this this probably just means that there was a big big cluster um and so these hives should have been should be pretty good over the winter time i've been around this yard i think the last video i posted went around this yard and found um, bees on the snow in front of all of the hives so so far things are looking pretty good here. i'm not particularly worried about that uh, cold spell that's coming now if it was persisting for a long time then your colonies that are not insulated will have an issue particularly if they've got brood already because what happens is you've got a cluster around a group of brood here around that cluster you've you've got your brood in the middle let's say surround that brood with your ball of bees to keep it warm and those bees on the outer edge of that ball are into the fresh honey in that colony now that honey will last them for so long and if it gets much colder or if it stays cold for a longer period of time that cluster has to move to reach new honey, but that brood is stuck there for three weeks. So it's anchoring them to a certain position. And so that cluster has to sort of stretch to get to new food because that brood is still there. And then if it gets super cold, that cluster has to contract in order to keep that brood warm because their priority is keeping that brood warm. And if it contracts too much, having already reached the limit of its honey sources, that's when the cluster dies, initiated because of the cold, which made the cluster shrink, which meant that because they were stuck in one spot because of the brood, and that cluster had to shrink, they can no longer reach out food, that cold persists for just too long, and that's when the colony starves, even though it's full of honey. But with insulation, you don't have that issue and uh, I get frustrated by the folks that keep on insisting you do not need insulation well it helps a lot the circumstances just like that as well anyway I'm going back in get warmer again it hasn't been above freezing for some time now we're gonna get a day tomorrow I think we're, we're just gonna get above freezing for a few hours before that uh, 
little uh, cold snap start. Hopefully it won't last too, too long. And then maybe in a few weeks, I'll get to a little warm spot as well myself. So it's, uh, we just booked a bit of time down the Florida Keys for a week. So I am gonna look forward to that. Maybe even do some fishing. I'm Peter Cannon with the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.